Hello, everyone. Uh, this would be our last session in the course of uh, Hebrews, James 1st and 2nd Peter and June. So let's pray and I'll uh, get into our subject for today. Heavenly Father, we thank God for the opportunity to meditate on your word. We thank you for the strength that it brings. We thank you, Lord, for the uh, life transformation, Father, that we can experience through it. Even today, Lord, as we meditate on your word, we pray that, Lord, you will give us direction and uh, help us, O oh God, to keep walking with you and uh, be strong in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we were at uh, 2 Peter chapter 2. In 2 Peter chapter 1, we saw Peter's exhortation to be strong in the Lord. Here in chapter 2, what we see is a warning against false prophets and false teachers. So uh, Peter explains to the believers that there could be some among them who are teaching what is known as destructive heresies. He also points out that sometimes the appearance of these uh, heretics uh, is sort of subtle that one needs to be discerning to identify such people it's not very obvious so a believer needs to be cautious um, uh, with regard to any teachings that he may hear uh, and how do we distinguish you know these false teachers or prophets from those who are teaching the truth of god's word so he lists out uh, some characteristics you know he uh, says that uh, these people are deceptive, uh, they have deceptive words and uh, uh, their quality which drives them is really covetousness because uh, they want more than uh, what is theirs and so you know they don't um, they uh, don't feel bad about sh speaking uh, these false teachings and uh, he states that you know these destructive heresies not only will they uh, bring destruction to the hearers but they themselves the false teachers themselves will experience destruction and so in verse 3 he says and that destruction does not slumber so they're doomed to destruction he brings up three uh, comparisons here he talks about the angels who sinned in noah's times and how god has imprisoned them so there is a consequence that followed the um, disobedience of angels now the other uh, example that he brings up here is um, uh, you know the time of uh, uh, sodom and gomorrah where you find that uh, people were in sexual sin and uh, that was a time when god decided to bring destruction on those people so whenever we are living in sin you know there is a consequence to that and there is um, uh, an outcome uh, destructive outcome to our sinful lifestyle and that's something one needs to recognize so he says that you know god delivered even lot who was in that kind of a situation um with uh, all kinds of evil around him but god is faithful he knows how to deliver the righteous from such circumstances uh, but the focus here is the punishment which follows a sinful lifestyle a sinful um you know of a fleshly way of uh, living life um, so it's a warning here where he's trying to tell uh, the people that there will be destruction that follows such teachers now he adds more characteristics to such teachers he says that uh, they walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness they despise authority they are uh, presumptuous they are self-willed meaning they um, uh, they do their own so concerned about the standard of God's word and he continues to say that you know they speak evil of dignitaries that points to speaking evil of heavenly beings even though they don't understand much about um, uh, you know uh, all these all these aspects they uh, are not careful they just go ahead and speak anything which they want now uh, because they are in this way punishment will follow he reminds them look even when uh, you have 
uh, angels. So verse 11, he says, whereas angels are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. So he's making a point here, which we will see repeated in the book of Jude, where even angels, they are, uh, uh, they, they have this instruction to speak as per the authority that has been given to them. So even they don't go beyond that authority or boundary uh, in which God has kept them. So how can these false teachers uh, speak evil against dignitaries um, the way they please? So he is uh, telling how these people do not regard authority or they do not um, or they are living a, a lifestyle of rebellion. So these are all characteristics of uh, such false teachers. Now, he adds more features. He says, you know, they are natural brute beasts um, uh, uh, who have a consequence you know they are meant to be caught and destroyed he says they speak evil of things that do, they do not understand and um, you know they will utterly uh, perish in their own corruption he states that um, they will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who counted pleasure to carouse in the daytime. So basically he's saying that these are people who are living for their own pleasure. Carouse in the daytime means not having, uh, uh, not uh, uh, being conscious that the time uh, that God has given us is to live for him, to honor him, glorify him, but just, you know, uh, spending time for their own pleasure. That's the way these false teachers are. So we find that neither are they, um, uh, uh, careful about the doctrine, nor are they careful about the lifestyle that they live. So their lifestyle is quite clearly away from the holy lifestyle which God is calling every believer and especially the teachers of God's word to live. So uh, he wants people to identify false teachers by what they say and also the way they live. Now he adds, he says that uh, they are spots and blemishes. Okay, so uh, 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 you know, they, it, they're not a good example, basically. That's the point that he's making. And he adds, uh, he says, um, they are full, their eyes are full of adultery and uh, they cannot cease from sin. Okay, and they go ahead and entice unstable souls. So when one is not strong uh, in the word of God, it is possible that they could be swayed away from such wrong teaching. Now, he uh, uh, points to people like um, Balaam, right? Who uh, who were willing to go against God for the sake of uh, their greed, and uh, they were in such um, such a false, you know, state of greatness that even a donkey had to come and rebuke Balaam for um, the way he was thinking, uh, and uh, so. We mustn't follow after the example of such false teachers. Now, he says they are wells without water, clouds carried by a tempest, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. So verse 17, you know, he states this. So uh, this simply means that though they are uh, preaching God's word, and there is an expectation whenever the word of God is presented, an expectation to receive uh, the impartation which is coming from the word of God. But then uh, through the ministry of such false teachers and heretics, there's really nothing that we can receive. So that's why he says, wells without water you know when we go to a well we we expect some water but there is no water there and uh, in fact it's a dangerous an empty open well that people can even fall and uh, uh, you know uh, they can be injured so things like that where they do not meet the expectation of either god or god's people so let's be warned of such um, such teachers now uh, he continues he say uh, says they have great swelling words of emptiness they allure through the lusts of the flesh through lewdness um, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error okay. so uh, then you know he he goes on to talk about how these people uh, you know they their their teaching is really uh, not helpful and uh, it's so sad in verse 20 he says they uh, have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the lord savior jesus christ okay just a moment yeah uh, they have escaped uh, the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ but unfortunately they are again entangled in them 
right so that's so sad that they have tasted the truth and they continue uh, in in uh, deception and lies uh, and he very sadly in verse 21 he says for such people it would have been better for them not to have known the uh, way of righteousness so uh, it's very unfortunate that there are such uh, false teachers and that they are dooming themselves to destruction as well as others around them so that uh, those are main uh, points that we notice in second peter chapter 3 chapter 2 now in uh, chapter 3 there is a reminder that god is faithful to do what he has promised so he reminds us that god is not slack to his promises or even though in our natural uh, ways you know we um, see that some promises take time to be fulfilled he's just helping the believer know that uh, you see for god the way time is he god is outside of time uh, so uh, you know our slowness like when we experience slowness uh, it's not the same you know the way it is for god so in verse 8 he says but beloved do not forget this one thing that with the lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day so he's just saying that the way we understand time is very different from the way god sees time and in fact he's outside time and these false teachers may even uh, uh, make statements to say that you know god has forgotten the promise he will never fulfill those promises it's going to take a very long time before jesus comes back so these kind uh, of statements uh, come from false teachers but he's just encouraging the believer and he's saying look you know god is faithful if he has spoken he will do it so just hold on to god and uh, you will see everything that god has promised fulfilled now now he also in addition talks about the time when um, uh, the uh, air, all the all the things that exist right now are going to be burned up by fire because god is going to create a new heavens and new earth right so this is talking about the culmination of our times uh, the end times um, uh, so eschatology and I, you know we have studied about all those things in in uh, the separate subject which we have but he's explaining it in fact from verses 10 to 13 he goes ahead and explains how some of these things will manifest so in the light of god's uh, greatness in the light of the reality of who god is and his faithfulness he wants a believer to continue strong in the lord uh, and at the last section he encourages the believer here to be strong in god okay be steadfast in god uh, don't fall uh, into the error you know of such wicked people there will be false teachings in the last days there will be um, false prophets prophecies uh, and you know it, it's nothing new because we find that not only um, peter here but uh, apostles like uh, john even jude we are going to uh, get into jude right now um, they too warn about uh, such people so uh, in the early church we know that there were such people right but uh, the false teachers and heretics but they could be identified by their teaching they could be identified by their motivation they could be identified by their lifestyle and uh, you know it was really sad that they had accepted christ and they had fallen into such error uh, now let's quickly move to uh, the book of jude here the good thing is that even jude you know has um, these themes repeated um, warning you know against heretics so it seems like they were all um, speaking uh, regarding a, a you know a common issue that that had emerged in the early church so jude as we know it's a letter uh, to the believers uh, written by judas the half brother of jesus and um, you know judas preached against the dangerous practices and doctrines that put the gospel of our lord jesus christ in peril so uh, in the book of jude you know he says that uh, he refers to something known as um, our concerning our common salvation so basically he wants people to be diligent about what the lord jesus has done for us so when he says common salvation he's not saying that it's an ordinary salvation but um, what he's pointing to is that this salvation is what everyone has 
you know the the community of believers has received so in terms of it belonging to the entire community he uses this term common so more to do with the community and what they have believed as a community so he says uh, uh, i was diligent to write to you concerning this common salvation and then he goes on to exhort the believers to contend earnestly for the faith which was once delivered to the saints so so he uh, charges the believers to hold on to the truth of god's word in such a way that you know they um, are firm and they are not swayed by all kinds of teachings that were going on in their times and even jude brings a warning he says certain men have crept in unnoticed remember sometimes they are very subtle uh, uh, the the way these false te teachers come in so he says uh, certain men have uh, crept in unnoticed and uh, you know they were marked long ago for their this condemnation ungodly men right so he also describes uh, such people and uh, he brings a warning on them so now he reminds them of certain examples very similar to what we saw uh, uh, apostle peter do so he brings a reminder and he says that um, when it was you know there were some people who were brought out of egypt but when they did not believe what happened you know, they were destroyed is this land then he points to people such uh, then he points to the angels who sinned during noah's time and he talks about the darkness and judgment which they experienced and also he talks about the people who were judged in the cities of sodom and gomorrah who practiced uh, sexual immorality and he says went after strange flesh so you no know, right the details of what exactly they did so and that's the reason he you know, speaks of them in this manner he says that all these people are doomed to destruction there will be uh, consequences uh, you know eternal fire which they experience so that is a warning for us that when we uh, take off in the path of unrighteousness wickedness untruth uh, there are going to be consequences because god has not spared those down that path uh, you know from now he goes on to uh, you know pointing to others as well but for that he makes a uh, statements unique to uh, of in verse 8 i will read from verse 8 he says likewise all these dreamers defile the flesh reject authority and speak evil of dignitaries the characteristics of false teachers verse 9 the archangel in contending with the devil when he disputed about the body of moses dared not bring against him a reviling accusation but said the lord rebuke you so he's stating here that the angel michael right he had a certain role and a responsibility given to him and he is stating a unique situation something about a dispute uh, regarding the body of moses now we don't have more details about this because this is sort of a standalone scripture but it's best not to extrapolate it to come up with all kinds of meanings uh, whatever is here is here uh, right and uh, we also notice that uh, uh, michael does not go beyond his given authority so he doesn't um, rebuke the devil himself but he says the lord rebuke so it's within the boundaries and that's a lesson for us to learn even when we uh, talk about here dignitaries referring to heavenly beings uh, we need to stay in our um, we must not take them lightly is is the point here he says that people who are false teachers who are against the standards of god's word they do all kinds of things they speak whatever they like and that's not correct and then he points to people like Cain, uh, Balaam and Korah. Now Cain is an example of unbelief because he offered something to God but you know it wasn't filled with faith uh, which is why it got rejected. Then we find that uh, he points to Balaam. Balaam was a prophet who prophesied for profit and that's also not good because there's greed in his attitude. And then there is Korah. Korah is an example of rebellion. So he says that when it comes to such false teachers, that is their motivation, you know, unbelief, uh, greed, and uh, rebellion. And we must stay clear from 
such things now he goes on to talk about the consequences of uh, such people he explains them right like there are spots in your love feast there are clouds without water there are uh, late autumn trees without fruit so basically fruitlessness there is a form of godliness, but they are fruitless. So we must be careful about such people. Then there's another uh, statement here regarding Enoch. Okay, so there is a prophecy it says that you know Enoch prophesied that um, God, the Lord Jesus, He will come with thousands of His saints. Now again, regarding Enoch and what Enoch did, we don't have too much in the Bible, um, so we will uh, only take what is given here. And uh, it seems like during the first century, there were other, there was other literature that the, um, the church fathers believed in um, from where they get all this information you know the body of moses and um, enoch as a prophet uh, but we will take what is given in the canon of scripture for us and you know people who move into too much of researching these things we're not too sure right like uh, uh, what whether those books now are uh, uh, the exact ones that the apostles believed in but here there is some statement about enoch being a prophet and uh, prophesying so you know we uh, accept what is being spoken here okay um moving forward you know there are more characteristics of these ungodly people uh they are grumblers complainers walking according to their own lusts um they speak swelling words flattering people to gain advantage um so these are their works uh, and we must be aware uh, they are sensual they cause divisions uh, not having the spirit so they don't carry the the spirit of god they're not filled with the spirit of god but instead you know, he encourages the believer he says that as a believer in verse 20 he says we must build ourselves in faith okay how do we do that praying in the holy spirit and keeping ourselves in the love of god so instead of following these false teachers and uh, being like these false teachers we as believers must be strong in the lord and one of the things that helps us build up our faith and stay in the love of god is to pray in the holy spirit so that is the encouragement which he is bringing to the believers and uh, finally you know he goes on to um, uh, um speaking a word of blessing and exhortation upon the uh, believers uh, stating verse, from verse 24 now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to god our savior who alone is wise be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever amen so he speaks a blessing he speaks an exhortation with that we close with uh, our course and um, i really want to wish everyone um, the very best for uh, the future thank you all for being part of this journey i really appreciate you uh, staying on in the in the journey for all these three years and uh, may the lord bless you your families and your ministry let's pray and close Heavenly Father, we thank you for the grace that you gave us, O oh God, to study your word. Father, even as each one steps out, Lord, to serve you, we pray for the empowering of the Holy Spirit. We pray that, Lord, uh, 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 each of us, Lord, will, will be able to release the power of the kingdom and honor and glorify your name. We thank you for each opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Bye for now.